Okay. Good morning, children. Hope you are all safe and fine at home. So due to this pandemic condition, we are again restarting the online classes. So do utilize this opportunity. Don't waste your time. Okay, coming to the lesson. Lesson number 11, Habitats of Organisms. So as I taught you in the last class, again, we are continuing the same in this lesson about living things, non-living things, and the biotic, about biotic components and abiotic components. Living things are found almost wherever on earth, everywhere on earth, on land, in water, in the air, in the soil, under stones and logs, in the grasses, on trees, in our homes. Almost all the sites in the environment are the living things. We can found everywhere there. Living organisms cannot live in isolation. Isolation means uh, they cannot live separately or else they cannot live alone. They need food and other materials from their surroundings to survive. So if they want to survive what they need, they need the food materials to live in the surroundings or in our environment. The, their survival is also dependent on how well they are able to protect themselves from their natural predators. Predators means the animals, the, what they catch for their prey. Let us take the case of a frog. A frog needs enough water to survive. It also needs small insects to eat. So what does the frog need? It needs a small insects, insects to eat and it lives in a water to survive. On the other hand, snakes and eagles eat the frogs. Therefore, the presence of these animals affects the frog's survival. So by eating these frogs, the frog survival is, will be affected. All living things are therefore affected by the living and non-living things around them. Coming to the environment. What is environment? Environment means not the, the surroundings in our house or else in our nature is called as the surroundings. Everything that is found in the surroundings of a living thing and all factors affecting its growth, development and survival are known as its the environment. So environment consists of biotic and abiotic. Biotic means living organisms, abiotic means non-living components. All non-living things, including soil, water, and air, as well as climatic factors, such as temperature, rainfall, humidity, and wind speed, are the, these are called as the abiotic components. So, the soil, water, air, minerals, mountains, temperature, climate, all this is called as the abiotic components. These form the physical or the abiotic environment. All living things, including plants, animals, and microorganisms, make up a biological or as a biotic component. The biotic and abiotic components together form the natural environment. So, in our natural environment, both the things is there that is biotic and abiotic. Biotic means living, and abiotic is non living. The environment varies in different places. So from the place to place or else from the area to area, there are many differences. A desert can be hot and have a very little water. So as you all know, the place of the Rajasthan is the desert area. So it is very hot and very less water. A tropical rainforest is also hot, but has plenty of water. So tropical forest means where the trees is green grown more. So in that area, even the hot also little bit is there and there will be a plenty of water. Plants grow in a rainforest, cannot survive in the desert. So what the plants will be grown in the rainforest? That plants is, cannot be survived in the desert area, the place like in Rajasthan. Similarly, the environment in a pond is very different from that in an ocean. So there are many different between a pond and a ocean. Pond is a small area, whether the ocean is the biggest area. So a frog that lives in a pond cannot survive in the ocean. So what the frog can survive only in the well or else in the river, but not in the sea or the ocean. 
a big water animal such as shark cannot survive in the pond this the environment of places decide the kinds of organism that can live there so the big animals like whales shark that types of animals cannot be placed in a small pond then biotic components living organisms that make up the biotic environment are dependent on each other for their food so living organisms what they depend upon, they depend upon the food, food for their for food in the environment they are always found to exist close to where food is available why they will exist in the same place because the food is available in the nearest area for the living organisms animals that eat only plants live in the places where plants plants are been grown so where does almost all the animals live animals live in the place where the plants are been grown for the for their food animals that eat other animals live where their prey is easily reached so animals what the eat uh, what they eat the other animals no where they can get easily their food or as their prey they will stay there they will live there bees are usually found where there are many flowers as they get nectar from the flowers nectar means the sweetness what they get from the flower so in that places most of the bees and insects will be there where they will be there means where the flowers are been grown more so flowers are essential part of the bees in the biotic environment if there were no flowers the bees would either move or the another area move to another area or else die so if the bees uh, bees doesn't get the food or else the nectar what they'll do they will move to the another area or else they uh, if they want to survive they move to the another area or else if they want to die the flower needs the bees too so as the same way how does the bees bees needs the flowers no even the flowers also need the bees bees help in pollination pollination means what transferring pollen from anther to the stigma is called as pollination so bees are an important part of the plants in biotic environment biotic components can be classified as the three main parts that is producers consumers and the decomposers what are the producers means producers are the organisms that which can prepare their own food for example plants they are also even the producers also been called as what autotrophs since why they are called autotrophs means because they can prepare their own food they convert the energy into the sunlight into food through the process of the photosynthesis so plants use the green colored substance why are the plants are green in color because the chlorophyll present in the plants so this purpose plants are is in green in color that is present in the leaves to make the food chlorophyll helps the producers trap the energy in sunlight consumers and deconsumers get food from the producers whether whereas producers prepare their own food but consumers and the decomposers prepare the they get the food from the other organism that is producers so the producers are the source of energy for the entire biological environment so coming to the consumers consumers are organism that get nutrients from the other organisms consumers means what that is the organisms which get the which get their nutrients nutrients from the other organism even this is called as heterotrophs they cannot prepare their own food they must be dependent from the other organisms so this is called as the heterotrophs all the animals are consumers and depend on the plants for food directly they are divided into the following groups that is herbivore carnivore and the omnivore what are the herbivores means herbivores is also called as the primary consumers carnivores is called as the secondary consumers so herbivores are the consumer primary consumers which are the animals that eat only the plants herbivores is the animals so herbivores are the consumers that eat only the plants for example which are the animals that eat only the plants giraffe cow goat sheep etc elephant etc these are the animals which eat only the plants then coming to carnivores carnivores is also called as the secondary consumers 
so they eat only the other animals which are the animals which eat only the other animals lion tigers wolves cheetahs etc these are the animals which eat other animals omnivores means omnivores are the animals that eat both the plants and animals what are the difference between these three herbivores carnivores and omnivores herbivores are the animals which eat only the plants carnivores are the animals which eat which eat only the other animals omnivores are the animals that eat only uh, that eat both the plants and animals the main example for this is the human being human beings bears and the crows are the some common examples for the omnivores so when the animal dies a part of the dead animal may be eaten by the other animals such as jackals crows and vultures animals that consume the dead bodies of other animals is called as a scavengers scavengers means what the animals if uh, any, any other animals dies the other animals will depend upon that food the uh, means uh, dead animals they will eat so this type of uh, animals is called as the scavengers so which are the animals which eat the dead animals means jackals vultures crows then decomposers in an environment the nutrients that are absorbed from the soil by plants are passed on all the consumers decomposers help the nature to recycle these nutrients back again to the soil decomposers are the organisms such as bacteria and fungi that break down the that help to break down or decompose the dead material when a consumer or a producer dies if an animal dies what it happen again the bacteria and the fungi decompose the dead material into the nutrients it was made up of and again it return back to the soil again the place where they come from thus decomposers carry out the important function of returning nutrients back to the soil then coming to abiotic components abiotic factors such as temperature amount of water sunshine nature of soil are also called are so on depended on the weather and the climate of a place so weather changes from day by day as you all know so it is very hot also cold also rainy then clear humid or the dry temperature so what are the abiotic components abiotic components are the components which are the non living things that is soil water minerals then um, uh, mountains these are as called as the abiotic components then temperature sunshine clouds rain humidity and wind are the factors that determine the weather the climate of the place is determined by the weather over a for a long period of 50 to 100 years how much it depends on 50 to 100 years for example the climate of a hot desert it is the place of the hot desert that is rajasthan it is very hot while as very cold in the place of the mountains that is in himachal pradesh water bodies like water bodies like seas oceans lakes rivers and ponds cover about 71% of the surface of the earth as you all know our earth contains about 3 fourth of the water and the rest is the land these water bodies support a wide variety of life such as microorganisms fish whales crabs and seaweeds seaweeds means what seaweeds is the plants grown in the deep of the sea or else the ocean habitat we have seen how living organisms are dependent on each other for their food and the other needs so where the food is been needed where we are the uh, need to survive in that place only we are been stayed therefore we will find several types of plants animals and microorganisms in a particular area so this purpose this purpose only the plants and the animals and the microorganisms stay in their the particular area or the living area that area becomes the living area or the habitat of these organisms a habitat is an area or environment where an organisms are normally found so what is the habitat means habitat is an a living area or a living or a environment where the organisms organisms are normally found the habitat as everything that an organism needs to survive and reproduce so why they need the habitat as everything that the organisms needs to survive survive means they were where they want to live for the living uh, thing and reproduce 
Grasslands, deserts, forests, swamps, and ponds are some of the habitats that living organisms lives in. So, what is a swamps mean? Swamps is a swamp is a place which is not usable to cultivate. It is a place or it is a land which is not usable to cultivate, and it is also a wetland which water is covered fully without. Flowing. This is called as a swamp. Plants and animals tend to stay in one type of habitat because the conditions in that particular area are favorable and their uh, their chances of survival are greater. So, why the plants and animals stay in the same area? Because it is better to stay because it is better to survive in that condition or the in that area. They are also suited or adapted for living in that particular habitat. The habitat consists of abiotic and the uh, biotic and abiotic environments. All biotic components share the biotic abiotic components such as so these are all the abiotic components. What are those? Air, water, soil, temperature, light, and there is constant interaction between the abiotic and biotic environments. Types of habitats. The two types of habitats are. Aquatic habitat, aquatic or the water habitat, terrestrial or the land habitat. So as this the word say, so aquatic or have water habitat means the animals or the plants which stays in the water is called as the aquatic or the water habitat. Terrestrial or the land habitat means the plants which stays on the land. Aquatic habitats are further subdivided into the following marine habitats in that. The first one is marine habitats. Marine habitats covered about three fourths of the area surface. So, as I told you, earth is base covered with the three fourths of the water, and the rest is the land. The earth surface and include oceans, coral reefs, reefs, and estuaries. The organisms living in these marine habitats are known as marine organisms. So, this type of uh, organisms is called as the marine organisms. Various types of whales, dolphins, sea turtles, fishes, prawns, octopuses, and swedes are the examples of the marine organisms. Why they are called as marine organisms? Because they survive in the water. Freshwater habitats. Freshwater habitat includes streams, rivers, pond, ponds, and the lakes. So, why they are called as fresh water habitat? Because this water will be always flowing. Water has it, water has it, uh, various types of fishes and water bugs are some of examples of organisms found in the fresh habitats. Terrestrial habitats. The largest variety of habitats is found on land as it has the greatest variations in abiotic abiotic factors mainly temperature and availability availability of water depending on the living conditions they offer terrestrial habitats are of various types some of these are as follows the largest variety of habitats is found on land as it has the greatest variations in the abiotic factors. Then coming to desert habitats. Desert habitats get very little or no rain. So as you all know, in the Rajasthan the place is called as the desert. There is very less rainfall. Deserts are always dry, but they cannot be, they can be very hot or very cold. Camels, gerbils, and cacti are some of the organisms found in the hot and dry deserts. So these are the animals or else the organisms which can stay, which can survive in this area, which are those camels, gerbils, and cactic. Cactic is the type of a plant which have so many thorny. Uh, Bactrian, the ja camels, jackrabbits are uh, some grasses and lichens are some of examples of organisms found in the cloud cold deserts. So, these are the living organisms which are found in the cold deserts. Grassland habitats are grassland habitats are windy areas of grass with a few trees. So, 
what are the grassland habitats means this is a small area or this is the area which have a few trees grasses zebras giraffes and deer so these are the these animals are the grass eating animals so are the some of the examples of organisms that lives in the grassland animals such as deer are ecologically important as they are the main food for the main food for carnivores so these are the these animals are the carnivores which are this the deer predators like leopards so these are predators is leopards and the lions tigers wolves these are the predators then coming to the tropical rainforest habitats tropical rainforest habitats are warm and wet because there always the rain will be coming it is a rainy area they get plenty of rain throughout the year so this is why this is called as the tropical rainforest this is the tropical rainforest habitat rainforests are seen closely to the close to the equator and are home to different kind of birds and animals so many many varieties of tall trees creepers monkeys snakes and lizards are some examples of organisms in the tropical area so these are the animals which lives in the tropical area where the rain is very high tundra habitats tundra habitats are very cold and dry so in this area it will be very cold or else it will be very dry and the sub oil sub soil is always frozen therefore vegetation is scanty habitats and adaptations we have seen that animals and plants found in different habitats are not the same so they have their different habitats so even the animals have their different habitats plants have their different habitats and the human beings have their different habitats fish are found in water and deer are found in the grassland so fish cannot stay outside or else deer cannot stay in the water while camels and cacti are found in the deserts so even the uh, camels or the cacti uh, they are, can stay only in the desert area a deer cannot survive in water as it does not have the characteristic that can help it to, to live there it has the characteristics that are suited to live on the land many organisms are found in particular habitats because they are not adapted to live any anywhere else so so for this purpose only the where the animals want to survive they live there only an adaptation is a characteristic that an adaptation is a characteristic that is found in an organism that helps it the flourish in a particular habitat so coming to the tundra habitats there are different kinds of grasses hare foxes and reindeer these are all the examples of the tundra habitats organisms the mountain habitats mountain habitat means it is very rocky or else very cold windy for example uh, himachal pradesh high mountains have snowfall mountain like goats yaks sheep and pines are some of the examples of organisms that are found in the mountains then adaptations in aquatic organisms there are many varieties of plants and animals which are found in the water plants that grow in water is called as hydrophytes so the main thing is <coughs> hydro means water phytes means plants totally it is called as hydrophytes these plants either float on water or live under the water so these are the plants which floats on the water or else it will go under the water the hydrilla is an aquatic plant that is found completely submerged in water submerged means it will be very deep in the water the lotus and water lily are the examples of aquatic plants so you have all seen the lotus and the water lily no these are all the aquatic plants that flows only on the water it doesn't go under the water aquatic plants have the following adaptations they have specialized roots designed to take in oxygen and help the plants to either float in water or to hold in the plant hold the plant in the place so they have the specialized roots 
so because uh, so this purpose only the plants will be hold under the water very stiffly they have hollow stems which air sacs to follow in flotation the lotus and water lily have large flat floating leaves with a waxy coating on their lower surfaces to make them waterproof stomata are present on the upper part of the surfaces the hydrilla has thin narrow leaves which do not get torn due to the flow of water so if it is flow if it, the water flows also these leaves cannot will not be torn animals living in or near water are called as aquatic animals so what are the animals which lives in the near water or else living in the water these animals are called as the aquatic uh, aquatic animals which are those animals for example fish fish have streamlined bodies that make it easier from them for them to move in water so for this purpose only they have the streamed lines on the upper part of the body the fishes have the streamed lines in the upper part of the body so for this purpose only they can move easier in the water in a zigzag manner they also have special organisms called gills that is for useful for breathing purpose breathing in oxygen from the water gills cannot be used to breathe in air so if the fish has been taken out of the water it cannot breathe so if it is in water only by using the gills from the uh, gills only it can breathe in the air fish have fins and a tail to swim what does the fishes have it have a fins and the tails also to swim many of them have air bladders that air bladders that help them to float on water aquatic animals such as dolphins whales or porpoises use their flippers to steer and move around so many of the water aquatic animals they use this to live in the water to move to round or to go around the water to twist everything they do not have gills so this type of animals they do not have gills for breathing under water but have lungs instead these animals come to the surface of the water to breathe so what they'll do they come to the surface of the water to breathe and again return back when they reach the surface they forcefully expel air expel means take air inside through the through an opening called the blow hole you can see in the picture at the top of the dolphin the blow hole is there that is called as the blow hole the blow hole is located at the top of the head frogs that live both on land and in water have webbed feet the, to help in swimming so you have all seen the frog no so how does the frog uh, legs have so in that purpose only it can live both in the water also in the same in the land also they have lungs to breathe while on land and uh, moist skin to take in oxygen when in water